Take a breath. Count to five. Everything is as it should be. Everything will continue to be as it should be. Subtract two. The future is now, so you can stop waiting. Tomorrow is just the yesterday that the day after tomorrow does not want to dance with. Do not panic. All is well. All is well. Subtract three, then add four, and then one more to what remains. That is the same five you started with. All of that was a waste of time. Shame on you. It has been 1,370 days since we have been liberated, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, comrades and friends, from the tyranny of freedom. This is your daily reminder of how good you have had it since the Artillian extraterrestrial invasion and subjugation 1,371 days ago, which succeeded after a battle with human forces lasting roughly 11 and a half minutes. All hail, Artillia! All hail the eyes in the sky. The animated corpse of Chuck Barris is not at all well. I am your host, Landon Harker, and here's how good you have it today. Fighting today in Malaysia between sparse human resistance forces and hardened artillian mercenaries at the edge of a bridge just a few miles from the bridge that the bridge on the River Kwai was inspired by. The fighting became intense, and the fresh, ripe fruits of peace were shattered horribly into the preserves of conflict. Initially, the Artillian forces were eager to understand what all of the shouting and gesticulating from the humans was about. It was a little over the top. The Artillian mercenaries invited the human forces to the other side of the bridge for a brief repose consisting of bisca and biscuits. Oh, I just got that. Unfortunately, human forces simply would not listen to reason. At least we believe that's what happened at this time. Artillian forces did not have a translator on hand, so it is possible that from the perspective of the humans, the Artillians were simply half hovering, not farting, and making guttural sounds, not unlike poorly lubricated engines failing to turn over in their general direction. Okay, now that I say that out loud, I see how that could be petrifying. Suffice it to say that all of the human resistance forces were met in the middle of that bridge, near the bridge that the bridge on the River Kwai was inspired by, and those that had been alive at the start of things are now very not so much alive. Or unalive. Does that sound better? Memorials to the fallen humans will be held never by anyone, and their names will be stricken from history. Good riddance. You almost ruined it for the rest of us. And now in the personal story segment, I would like to finally convey the anecdote about my second wife, Betty, and her marvelous boysenberry pie that was not broadcast when the whole time manipulation bird thing happened. So there we were, one summer's day, and Betty stood before the French doors in the kitchen. She wore a white and yellow sundress and her golden hair bobbed in curls, perfectly framing her face. More than boysenberry was in the air that day, it hung heavy with new love. It was at that moment that I decided now to bring you a further feeling of peace, the sounds of birds. We apologize. The last sounds of birds played were the wrong sounds of birds. Those responsible for this error in audio have been vivisected and a bill has been sent to their families. Cash on delivery. Now, the correct sound of birds. For those of you who thought those sounds of birds too brief, here is the same audio again, slowed to three quarter speed, as we do not have a longer clip. and eventually we got dressed again, sweat still clinging to our foreheads, and we ate that boysenberry pie she had left on the kitchen island to defrost. Ah, 
memories, friends. That's what life is built upon. Some French doors, a blonde and a sundress, several hours of intense lovemaking, and a frozen pie. The Artillion Division of Streaming Services regrets to inform you that the following streaming services have been banned, effective immediately. Acorn TV, All Be Okay, AMC Plus, Apple TV Plus, BR Live, BET Plus, Boomerang, BritBox, Crunchyroll, Direct TV Stream, Discovery Plus, Epics Now, ESPN Plus, ET Live, Fandango Now, Fox Nation, oh, my favorite, Fubo TV, Hallmark Movies Now, History Vault, Hot Star, Lifetime Movie Club, Motor Trend On Demand, NBC Sports Gold, Noggin, Philo TV, Pluto TV, Prende TV, Rooster Teeth, Showtime, Shudder, Sling TV, Smithsonian Channel, Sports Live, Stars, Sundance Now, Tubi TV, Univision Now, Really? Zumo, and YouTube TV. NBC Plus Now Plus, a service that streams both substandard entertainment directly to your device and mostly edible biscuits directly to your stomach pre-digested, is still available, extremely costly, and required for all humans. Enjoy episodes of the new, new, new gong show around the clock. Watch the corpse of Chuck Barris struggle to maintain and mostly fail. Fun for the whole family. Well, not so much fun as sort of pitiful and hard to watch. Unless, of course, pitiful and hard to watch is your family's thing. In which case, it's fun for the whole family. As per usual, no humans did anything of note today. Besides me, your humble host, who has tolerated your backbiting and lack of faith for longer than anyone would consider reasonable. Given this, I am pleased to announce that our Artillian lords have awarded me, your humble host, the Artillian Medal of the Order of Not Being Quite Incredible Enough to Be an Artillian, but almost. But still human in spite of everything. This is the highest honor Artillians can or will bestow upon humans. It is accompanied by a number of extraordinary rights and privileges, but you don't have to worry about the details too much. For you, this will never come up. The word of the day, friends, is a closely guarded secret. I don't know, so I can't tell you. It is my understanding that the word of the day had been written on a piece of paper and locked in a safe inside a vault inside another vault inside of Fort Knox, which is either the most secure place in the former United States or isn't. I can't recall. Either way, the combination to the safe and one of the vaults was lost, so the word of today is gone forever. That little anecdote certainly stirred a lot of excitement. Now say it with me. You are listening to Mayhem. The Artillian Division of Focusing on the Family and Anything That Would Offend the Family is proud to announce new censorship guidelines and requirements. Bad words are, as a general rule, bad, and will therefore no longer be permitted or tolerated. All profane, obscene, rude, blue, lewd, lascivious, and vile language will henceforth be censored in all print, audio, and visual media. Additionally, while you were sleeping, sensor units were installed directly into the back of your throats. Really, they came in while you were sleeping and did it without waking you up. Think about that for a second. Think about it. Thanks to this Artillian censorship technology, now even person-to-person -person communication will be effectively censored. So for instance, were you to be in a heated conversation with someone and wish to say to them, you sucking mucking son of a piece of fuck monkey sh**, you wouldn't know the right fucking way to sit on a motherfucking toilet seat, and even if a brain dog like you somehow managed it, you'd be too much of a to remember how to fucking use it, you fuck shit. You could not, no matter how hard you tried. In fact, the harder you tried, the louder the beeps emanating from your throat would become. But don't take my word for it, comrades. Give it a shot. Should you also lose bladder control while attempting to curse, well, that's just a coincidence. Or is it?
Additionally censored will be balls, tit, duke, home, honey, and pit. And now, let's check in on those Welsh cows one more time. Yep, still fine. Please be aware that those people around you who previously burst into flames and have now had their clothing and viscera restored before your very eyes should be ignored and not approached. It all happened due to an unfortunate clerical error. It's just one of those things that happen when the list of humans due to be summarily incinerated, wherever they happen to be standing at the time, is mixed up with the list of humans due to be issued puppies for their good works. The Artillian Division of Accidental Incinerations wishes to offer condolences, but not apologies. The Artillian Division of Accidental Incinerations does not make mistakes. What would they be apologizing for? Should any humans wish to file a complaint, they may do so to the AI Knowledge Assistant installed in their master closet. This is an action they will soon regret. Of late, there have been questions about Artillian contact with humanity before their invasion and subjugation 1,340 days ago. The Artillian Division of whether or not that's your business at first wished to inform you that was none of your business, but has since reversed its decision and has decided to sort of answer the question. There have been several reported incidents of supposed UFO crashes throughout history. Here are some of the most well-known. Roswell. In July 1947, an object crashed near Roswell, New Mexico, which was initially believed to be a UFO. The U.S. military later claimed it was a weather balloon, but many people doubt this. Kecksburg. December 1965, a metallic object crashed in the woods near Kecksburg, Pennsylvania. Many witnesses reported seeing a strange object being transported away by the military. Aztec. March 1948, an alleged UFO crash near Aztec, New Mexico. Witnesses claim that the military recovered wreckage and alien bodies, although the incident has been widely debunked. Shag Harbor, October 1967. A bright object crashed into the waters near Shag Harbor, Nova Scotia. The military conducted a search but found nothing, and the incident remains a mystery. Vargina, January 1996. Alleged extraterrestrial beings were supposedly recovered alive or dead from a crashed UFO in Vargina, Brazil. This incident is still debated and disputed. Three of these incidents were directly related in some way to Artillian activity. Two of them were just drunks misunderstanding the world around them. The Artillian division of whether or not that's your business wishes to make it known that which event is which is none of your business. They will, however, say in regard to the Roswell incident and humanity's fear of aliens probing them, those in glass houses should not throw stones. In mathematics news, the Riemann hypothesis, one of the most important unsolved problems in mathematics, has been solved. The Riemann hypothesis is a conjecture about the distribution of prime numbers among all positive integers and was first proposed by the German mathematician Bernhard Riemann in 1859. The Riemann hypothesis states that all non-trivial zeros in the Riemann zeta function lie in a straight line in the complex plane with the real part equal to one half. The Riemann zeta function is a complex function that is designed as the sum of the reciprocals of all positive integers raised to a given power. The significance of the Riemann hypothesis lies in its connections to many other areas of mathematics, including number theory, algebraic geometry, and analysis. It has important implications for the distribution of prime numbers, and its proof leads to significant advances in these areas. Congratulations to any of you that followed that. This host was strongly opposed to the inclusion of that background information given the median intelligence quotient of this show's audience, but I was, ladies and gentlemen, overruled.
Despite over a century and a half of effort by some of the greatest mathematicians in history, the Riemann hypothesis remained unsolved until earlier this afternoon when it was solved by an Artillian infant. The solution to the Riemann hypothesis is both yes and 17. Simple as that. How does that make you feel after all this time? It has been one of the seven Millennium Prize problems, a set of important mathematical problems that were identified by the Clay Mathematics Institute in 2000. Congratulations to the Artillian infant whose name cannot be uttered by the human mouth. This host wishes to comment on a supposed mistake many of you claim was made during our last episode in which this was uttered. This is your daily reminder of how good you have had it since the Artillian extraterrestrial invasion and subjugation 1,340 days ago. It was pointed out by a number of busybodies that the correct number of days was 1,370, not 1,340, and said busybodies had the audacity to claim this was an error. There are no errors, ladies and gentlemen. There are no errors, mistakes, issues, misapprehensions, or bloopers. Artillians do not make mistakes. I do not make mistakes. The only ones in this equation capable of making mistakes are you. This was both a test of your listening acumen and an example of just how little you can trust your stupid lying ears. So thank you for the feedback. When you arrive home, your home will no longer be there and will be replaced by a suspiciously familiar pile of smoldering tinder. Thank you for your attention and your service. You may think you've already been punished. You are mistaken. And finally, friends, the Artillian Division of Precision and Song Titles is eager to understand why that Steve Miller band song is not called Space Cowboy. Shout your answers out of your open windows at dawn. All hail, Artilia. All hail, the eyes in the sky. All is well. All is well. All is well. All hail, Chuck Barris. There are no mistakes. Mayhem is a wet work media production starring Landon Harker. It is written and produced by Dan Lauer. All music is provided courtesy of Kevin McLeod and licensed under Creative Commons by Attribution 3.0. To learn more, visit Incompetech.com. The Artillian Division of Whether or Not That's Your Business wishes to rem oh, whether or not that's your the Artillian Division of Whether or Not That's Your Business wishes to make it known that which event is which is none of your business. They will say they will, however, say in regard to the Roswell incident they will, however, say in regard to the Roswell incident they will, however, say in regards oh my god. They will, however, say in regard to the Roswell incident. <laughs> they will, however, say in regard to the Roswell incident and humanity's fear of aliens probing them, those in glass houses should not throw stones. <laughs> <laughs>